Y'all see him right there. We're back for another video with Carl's Garage. So today, this is for all the Kia people out there. It's Peter. <laughs> he actually came over to the house to fix my rear wheel hub on my 2015 Kia Optima. So if you guys have this issue, we're gonna show you guys how to do it. You guys, a lot of you guys have already watched the video when we fixed the uh, the wheel bearings, the front wheel bearings on my wife's Toyota Corolla. So now we're working on the Kia. So this might be an issue that you guys have. It's really loud. Use the gun. Yeah, but it will sit tight. Oh no, yeah, you just gotta leave it on there. It will sit tight on there. It'll be rip it off. All right, guys. So I'm gonna show you how to change your rear wheel hub. I was gonna do it, but. There's some linkages in the back. In fact, Peter did my rear uh, drilled and slotted rotors and I couldn't get one of the things off in the back. So let's go ahead and film Peter. So how many jobs you been doing today? No, actually my sister's car broke down. Oh. I had gone to, I had gone to save her. So that's what I've done pretty much. I haven't done anything. Oh. But I have one more job down the street. Oh, not down the street, but on the other side of 45. So this one, you just take off the, uh, the brake caliper. Uh -huh. uh, take off this one. I think it's on your bolt it on. Mm. Uh, there she is. And I'll put a link in the description to this below. So this one is, it's a bolt on, it has. Oh, his, okay. Yeah. So he has a reductor in. And that's the speed sensor or whatever it's yeah, called? Yeah, 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 it's called a re reductor. A reductor? A reductor in, yes. That's where the sensor rides on. All right. So you don't have to take off the strut. You don't? No. Okay, good. So let's see if we have to mess with the uh, e-brake, that is, on the back. Make noise, huh? Huh? You want us to make a noise? <laughs> yeah. Uh, noise. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Noise it is. There. Look at that. So I'm then we go ahead and uh, undo the the inside just a little bit, just to. Get it out of the way. Shot nineteen. You see? Can you see where I am? Huh? You see where I am? Way in the back, huh? See. See. It's on there good. Get you a cheetah bar or whatever. Whatever you have. Also, never been taken off, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's factory thought. I can't wait to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. What is that canister? Huh? That's what I'm wondering. Why is your canister all the way down? <laughs> Get a canister, yeah. Sort of a canister just hanging around. I don't know, but that close to the exhaust, too. Yeah, very close. So out of the way. It should pop right off. Mm. See, like that? Oh, wow. Yeah, so there. The one we are going for, it's all the way in here. Oh, it's a tool. Make it a roller tool. Yeah, there's no way. It's a funny design. I would have done all this. Yeah. It's a funny design, I'll tell you, because what would you put a caribou boat? Behind it. Behind, yeah. Are we 
wish all. I always say I wish all the engineers would come together <laughs> and share some notes. <laughs> you know, it would be nice. You have those two, hold these two hold the caliber bracket mm. right there. You can leave it hanging, it's not too heavy to damage anything. Oh, okay. Okay, these ones should come off with a. Uh... Never mind, we need uh, one of those. Uh... A punch? Yeah. <laughs> Schools are not so important. I mean, right, they're not required, right? Yeah. This is going to stay on regardless. Yeah. All right, there we are. Everything good? Everything good. So we have. I don't think we have to mess with this because okay. the bolts are on the, on the rear. So yeah, they're we, kind of in the back, right? Yeah, they're in the back. Yeah, 14s. Yeah, 14. So you have four of them. Yes, there's uh, So fast. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. You work on keels a lot? No, not really actually. Not really? Yeah. I don't I don't know many people with keels. How do you know them so well? Just because but like, how are you able to just do it so fast? I wanna say experience, but at the same time <laughs> it can look at this and say, Oh this is what I need, you know. So Yes, we have to take off this then, because it's right behind it. Never mind, I got it. Have you worked on a lot of Hondas? Hyundai, Honda, yes. Since they're the same car? Yeah, the Hyundai Arantras. And I think uh, Kia is built a little better than Honda. Really? Yeah. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube is gonna come on me. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got so many people with so many broken cars because of their engines and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's what, but luckily, no, mine keeps burning oil. I changed the PCV. Yeah. I just changed the oil cap. So look, I actually haven't drove it since I changed the oil cap. When, but I'm when waiting. you say burning oil, how? What, what are we looking? Just burning oil. I'm, I, I just did yesterday. I did the video with the oil cap, and that was my second quart of oil in seven days. So March 20th, I bought two quarts of oil. March 27th, I had to put the the last half of the second quart of oil in the engine. I've changed the oil pressure switch. Yeah. Uh, valve it, cover gasket. It shows up on the on the. It shows up on the on the dash that you don't have oil? No, never. Okay. Okay. It did it did do that. I changed the oil pressure switch. That cleared that, no more oil light. It just these cars have an issue, these and the uh, launchers in the 2.4 engine, that's why it's such a big recall. Uh -huh. They have that bearing issue. And yeah, a sign yeah. that you know that the bearing is starting to go bad, you'll just start burning oil for no damn reason. Okay. One of the signs. So the car will drive fine, uh -huh. but you just start burning oil for no damn reason. So like I said, I've changed everything that I know to change. The valve cover gas is not leaking anymore. It was leaking, shooting oil all over the um, heat pan in the back. Okay. Uh, PCV, found out that that burns a lot of oil, just changed that. Right. And then I just changed the oil cap because every time I would go to fill it up with oil, uh -huh. there would be oil around the oil cap. And I'm like, what? So I just changed that and I'm hoping that that fixes it. If not, I don't know what else it could be. But you know, burning oil, you can literally tell, you know, from the exhaust, if it's that much. 
You sure no leaks? You check no leaks? Nothing? Yeah, no leaks, never. Never nothing in the driveway. I can leave it in the garage, never any leaks. Whenever I go to change the oil, there's no leaks. But I, like I said, I know these engines are known for f Oh, excuse me, my bad, my bad. Sorry, YouTube. These, <laughs> these. <laughs> but you know, the best way to quantify that, you you want to do a complete, uh, complete oil change, right? Do a complete oil change. If you're scared that it's going to mess up on you, do an oil change at 2,000, right? Do a complete oil change the first, do another one in 2,000 miles, right? then you can quantify, hey, this is how much I'm consuming. Because if you're putting five, five quarts in there, mm -hmm. and after 2,000 or 3,000 miles, you're getting three, three quarts, you know, or maybe three and a half, it shouldn't, it's not that bad then. No, I'm not even getting that. I'm not getting that long. No? No, I'm getting like a week. Every week I got to put a quart of oil or two quarts of oil in. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot then. That's what I was thinking. After I did the cap, I'm just gonna see what else it could be. I mean, if it's if it's still doing it after the cap, then I know that the engine's on its way out. It's gotta be. Like that bearing has gotta be. Yeah, but that, that's that, that's part of documentation where you are you were able to quantify. Hey, you know, uh, I've been I've been having to do oil changes every so often and. This is how much I'm getting after every three, four thousand miles, you know? Yeah. Then you can be able to, you would have a good case where you're like, oh. Yeah, and you do, and that's what I have to teach people on the channel is that they have to get their KSDS, otherwise Kia and Hyundai will deny you. I've oh, been got my KSDS like two years ago. Of course. Um, so I'm, Tomball Kia is ready uh -huh. to take my car, but they won't take a car unless the engine fails. But they also will deny you mm -hmm. if you just let your car burn out of oil. And oh. which a lot of people do, they don't check it as, they're not as like anal as me, I guess. So right. they're not staying on it. Me, I'm staying on it because I don't want to get up there and then get denied. Right, right. And then they said, well, you didn't change your oil here or you didn't do this or you didn't pay attention. So like you just said, right. I document everything, mm -hmm. all the maintenance done to the car so that if there's ever any questions of, did I um, neglect my car? Right. And the answer is no. Yep, that's that's the only way to beat them because otherwise, without documentation, they'll you know they'll come back at you. Yep. They always give you a problem. Because of that. And a lot of people, I have so many messages, so many comments of people being denied mm -hmm. because of that exact reason. Yeah. Because yeah. they're not they're not in the business to keep changing all these people's engines. Oh, of course, of course. And uh, they'll find a reason for not to do it. Yeah. Then the shortage, I mean, it's not like that these engines are all over the place. No. They probably, you know what they might do? They might offer you a good deal to get another car. Yeah, they are. They are. They're yeah. offering, but I don't want another Kia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So maybe something on the lot, but right. the cars that we're looking at had nothing to do with Kia. Yeah, Kia is not. All right, we got it out. Right, this side's out. Okay. Is that new? That looks for this part because it's uh recessed uh, in there. Okay. It's gonna look new. Yeah. Oh, you can tell by doing that. Oh you can okay. So out with the old, in with the new. I'm glad they make them this easy. Yeah. <laughs> Are all the real ones like this? Uh, not all of them. Oh, no. no. So let's uh, wipe the sensor a little bit. You need any, any grease or anything, or no? no? All right. So if you have this, this will save your day is a short 14. It'll save your day without taking the strut. Okay. That's that's what, uh, again, you have the four, the four mounting points at the back, one, two, three, four, and they are at the far back. You can miss them. So like Peter said, you don't have to remove this. This is how to 
change your rear wheel hub without having to remove, because I know there's only one other video on YouTube and he's removing this, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to mess with all these, the e-brake and all that. Okay. And definitely don't do this with your e-brake on. Don't do that. Yeah, true, yeah, that too. Just parking, just put it in park. You can if you want, but you're gonna mess it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have a very hard time taking off the, the rotor too, so. Just to make it easy on yourself, you know. Also have a flex head. Flex head. Mm. You know, this will help a lot. Because what you're doing is you're going behind here. You're going in straight. Can you see? Okay. You're going in straight. But because of this... Oh, no, 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 it's not in. All right, you're going in straight and then having to turn it on the side like ah, that. Okay. So having a flex head will help. You know, because somebody's gonna say, oh no, I saw it being done, but they're using the, the fixed one, you know? Mm. If you have a flex head ratchet, is that's how I'm able to do it without removing the strap. Okay. So the right tools for the job. The right tools, yes, that too, you know? Right tools, right technique too. Because I've seen people, they wanna, let me do this because it always gets me. All right, somebody is trying to untie something uh -huh. and they wanna hold it down here, you know? The right technique, right? The way they were taught you in school, fulcrum effort, right? So you have to get a leverage, right? So you hold your tool right here and then you crank onto this. If you can't be able to do that when you're, when you're trying to, Hold it all the way at the end and do that. Look, look what happens. Either go down or up. up. Mm. So you're not straight in. So it's gonna start twisting, you know? So the right technique too matters at all, you know? That's why you see me holding. Whenever I'm doing it, I have to hold it on the head and then, uh, and then ratchet. Ratchet your way in or out. Right technique. <laughs> I saw somebody doing a motor. Uh, uh, I don't want to say her name. It's a really actually. Oh, but, is it really? Yeah, but Are I like YouTube? her content. Yes. Oh. She's on YouTube. She likes. Uh, she was doing a Kayori Mustang. Oh wow. Uh, they already know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she was undoing the the headboard on it, right? Mm -hmm. So she wants to she wants to hold. The, the big ratchet at the end and then put torque on it, right? Uh, uh, that's a bad idea? Yeah, oh yeah. I was like, I was holding my head, just waiting, <laughs> just waiting to see what will happen, you know? And I think she stripped one of the boards. That's how you strip boards. Really? Yeah. When Whenever you are doing it, you have to put on a, you have to hold it. Talk to spec. <laughs> <laughs> yes, talk to spec. We did that off camera. Talk to your talk to spec. <laughs> I always make fun because uh, the internet has different specs. <laughs> you know, so choose one and go right. with it. Yeah, we did that off camera because it's my car. You don't want to be crucified. For right. It. You didn't do it today, so no, it's this. So yeah, so I, I'm safe. I'm sure. And now, uh, of course, taking uh, putting it together is the reverse of taking it apart. So, yep. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Don't forget to follow Peter. He's also Peter Tech on YouTube. Peter, are you still filming? Yes.
You still filming? Uh, I have any now, well, but yeah, because I'm like, I, I shoot, seen... I shoot. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually come across very. A lot of jobs that are not on YouTube, oh, okay. lately, you know, but I, I've been so busy, I can't, you know. Super busy. Yeah. Yep, so here's his number, guys. Yeah. You're in the Houston area, Cypress Spring, Conroe, check them out. You guys know me, share the content. So this is finally done. I had to call my boy Peter because I didn't want to get into it. This crap would have took me all day. Thank you, guys. Check out all my other Kia content. I'll put this in a, a playlist so you guys can check out all the other Kia content. We're going to wrap this up. Peter's got another job to do, so I'm going to go back inside and start filming and get something to eat. But thank you guys for tuning into this video. This is how to change your rear wheel hub assembly. If yours is loud and stuff like that, and stay tuned because once I drive the car, I will tell you guys if it continues to uh, burn oil. All right, guys, thank you for everything. Be basic. Peace.